Course in Miracles, Original Edition, Chapter 12, The Problem of Guilt. Introduction. The ultimate purpose of projection as the ego uses it is always to get rid of guilt. Yet characteristically, the ego attempts to get rid of its guilt from its viewpoint only. Because as much as your ego wants to retain guilt, you find guilt intolerable. And you find guilt intolerable because guilt stands in the way of your remembering God. God, whose pull is so strong that you cannot resist the pull of God. On this issue then, the deepest split of all occurs. Because if you are to retain guilt as your ego insists, then you cannot be you. Only by persuading you that it is you could your ego possibly induce you to project guilt and thereby keep guilt in your mind. Yet consider how strange a solution the ego's arrangement is. You project guilt to get rid of it, but you are actually concealing guilt. You do experience guilt feelings still, even after you projected it, but you have no idea why. And on the contrary, then you associate your guilt feelings with a weird assortment of ego ideals which the ego claims you have failed. Yet you have no idea that you are failing yourself, the holy child of God, by seeing yourself as guilty. And believing you are no longer you, you don't realize you are failing yourself. Section 2. Crucifixion by Guilt The darkest of your hidden cornerstones holds the belief in guilt from your awareness, holds your belief in guilt from your awareness. The darkest of, the, of your hidden cornerstones holds your belief in guilt from your awareness. Yes, you see its results, but you associate it with a weird assortment of ego ideals that your ego says that you failed. But the darkest of your hidden cornerstones holds your belief in guilt from your awareness. For in that dark and secret place where your belief in guilt is being kept from your awareness is the realization that you have betrayed yourself, God's child, by condemning yourself to death. But you don't even suspect that this murderous but insane idea lies hidden there in you. You don't even suspect that this dark and murderous but insane idea lies hidden there in your mind because your ego's destructive urge is so intense that nothing short of the crucifixion of you, God's child, can ultimately satisfy your ego. Your ego doesn't know who you are because your ego is blind. Yet just let your ego perceive guiltlessness anywhere and your ego will try to destroy it because now your ego is afraid. Much of the ego's strange behavior is directly attributable to the ego's definition of guilt. Ego's definition of guilt? Yes. To the ego, the guiltless are guilty. Those who do not attack are the ego's so-called enemies because by valuing its interpretation of salvation, by not valuing 
those who don't attack, by their not valuing the ego's interpretation of salvation, which is projecting guilt, those folks are in an excellent position to let the ego go. Those folks who do not attack that your ego sees as enemies, those folks don't value the ego's interpretation of happiness or salvation, which is projecting guilt. And so those who do not value the ego's interpretation of happiness, which is projecting guilt, those folks are in an, in an excellent position to let the ego go. And that's why those who do not attack are the guilty ones to your ego. Those folks who have let the ego go because they do not value the ego's interpretation of salvation, which is projecting guilt, those folks have approached the darkest and the deepest cornerstone in the ego's foundation. And while the ego can withstand your raising all else to question, your ego guards this one secret with its life. What secret? The secret that the guiltless are guilty and deserve attack. The ego guards this one secret with its life because the ego's existence depends, does depend on keeping this one belief hidden, keeping it secret. So it's this secret that we must look upon and we must look upon it calmly because the ego cannot protect you against truth. Which means in your ego's, in, in spirit's presence, in the truth's presence, your ego is dispelled. The ego can allow you to raise all else to question except this one secret, the one secret that it guards with its very life, the secret that the guiltless are guilty and that those who don't attack are your enemies. That is the secret now that we must look upon calmly because your ego cannot protect you against truth. And in truth's presence, the ego is dispelled. The ego cannot protect you against the truth. Why? Because in truth's presence, the ego is dispelled. And so, in the calm light of truth, let us recognize that you believe that you have crucified yourself and others with your projections. Let's just look at that and recognize that calmly. You do believe that you have crucified the children of God, including yourself, with your projections and your attack, and that's why you feel guilty. Now, you haven't admitted this so-called terrible secret because you still wish to crucify the children of God if you could find them. Yet the wish to crucify and attack the children of God with projection of your guilt, that wish has hidden the children of God from your sight. Because that wish to crucify the children of God with your projected guilt, that wish is very fearful. And so you are afraid to find the children of God. Now you have handled this wish to kill yourself by not knowing who you are and identifying with something else. You have a wish to kill yourself. You have a wish to kill yourself, the child of God, and so now you're afraid to find yourself because you still believe that you might want to kill yourself if you could find yourself. This is very fearful because now you are afraid to find yourself. You have handled this wish to kill yourself 
by not knowing who you are and identifying with something else. You're afraid to find yourself, thinking that being afraid that you would crucify yourself with attack and guilt if you could find yourself. And so you have handled this fear by not knowing who you are and identifying with something else. You have projected your guilt blindly and indiscriminately. Yes, you have. But you have not uncovered guilt's source. Yes, you have projected your guilt blindly and indiscriminately, but you have not uncovered the source of your own perception of guilt. Because the ego does want to kill you. Which means if you identify with your ego, then you will believe that you want to kill yourself. And then you will be afraid to find yourself and know yourself. And so you will not know who you are. And the best way to do that is to identify with something else. Something you are not, like the body. We once said that the crucifixion is the symbol, the symbol of the ego. That's because when the ego was confronted with the real guiltlessness of the children of God, well, the ego did attempt to kill the child of God, the children of God. And the reason that the ego gave for wanting to kill a child of God was that guiltlessness is blasphemous to God. That is the reason that the ego gave for wanting to kill, trying to kill the children of God. The ego says, guiltlessness is blasphemous to God, is the reason the ego gave for wanting to crucify. That is the reason that your ego gave for wanting to attack with guilt the children, a child of God. To, that's because to the ego, the ego is God. So if something is anti-ego, it seems to be anti-God to the ego. To the ego, the ego is God. And so guiltlessness must be interpreted as the final guilt which fully justifies murder. You do not yet understand that all your fear of this course in miracles stems ultimately from this interpretation. All your fear of this course stems ultimately from the interpretation that guiltlessness is blasphemous to God and guiltlessness is the final, the final what? The final guilt, the final guilt that justifies murder. You don't yet understand that all your fear of this course ultimately comes from this interpretation. But if you will consider your reactions to this course, then you will become increasingly convinced that this is where all your fear of this course stems from. All my fear of this course stems ultimately from my ego's belief that to say you are guiltless and to accept your guiltlessness is the ultimate blasphemy. It's blasphemous to God and it is the final guilt that fully justifies murder. That belief that my ego holds is where all my fear of this course ultimately stems from. But if you will consider your reactions to this course, you'll become increasingly convinced that this is why you're afraid of this course. You're afraid of the guiltlessness that this course reminds you is you and only you. This course has explicitly stated that its goal for you is happiness and peace. Yet you're afraid of this course 
This Course has explicitly stated that its goal for you is happiness and peace, yet you're afraid of this Course. You have been told again and again that this Course will make you free, yet you react to this Course as if this Course is trying to imprison you. Most of the time you dismiss this Course, but you don't dismiss your ego's thought system. You have seen the results of this thought system, this Course, and you still lack faith in this Course. You must then believe that by not learning this Course, you are protecting yourself. And you don't realize that it's only, only your guiltlessness that can protect you. A Course in Miracles, the Course in Miracles plan has always been interpreted as the release from guilt, the atonement the healing and correction of guilt and fear plan has always been interpreted as the release from guilt. And this is correct if it is understood. Yet even when I have interpreted this course for you, you still have rejected this course which means not accepted this course for yourself. You have recognized the futility of the ego and its offerings. And even though you don't want the ego, you still don't look upon the alternative with gladness. You are afraid of being healed. You are afraid of being released from guilt. That's because you believe that guiltlessness will kill you. And make no mistake about the depth of this fear that you believe that your guiltlessness and this course will kill you. Make no mistake about the depth of your fear that this course, A Course in Miracles, will kill you. Because you do believe that in the presence of the Course in Miracles truth, the truth that you hear through A Course in Miracles, you will turn on yourself and destroy yourself. Make no mistake about the depth of your fear of the truth in this Course, because you do believe that in the presence of the truth you find in this Course, that you will turn on yourself and destroy yourself. You do believe that. Make no mistake about the depth of your fear of this course. Little children, this is not so. Your so-called guilty secret is nothing. And if you will just bring your so-called guilty secret to the light of truth, then the light of truth will dispel your so-called guilty secret. And then, no dark cloud of the ego will remain between you and the remembrance of your Creator. Because you will remember your Creator's guiltless children. Your Creator's guiltless children who did not die because they are immortal. Your projection of guilt upon them did not kill them. Your projection of guilt upon yourself did not destroy you because you and they are immortal. And you will see in that moment when you bring your so-called guilty secret to the light of truth and you let the truth of A Course in Miracles dispel it, then you will remember the guiltless children of God. And you will remember that the guiltless children of God, including yourself, did not die by your attack because they are immortal and you are immortal. In other words, you didn't kill the children of God. You didn't hurt others. You didn't hurt yourself. You didn't kill them. You didn't kill yourself. In other words, you will see that you were redeemed with them 
which means you've never been separated from them. And in this understanding lies your remembering, because this understanding is the recognition of love without fear. Now you will be able to experience love without fear. Now and only now will you be able to experience love without fear. You haven't been able to experience love without fear because you believed that you could crucify others and yourself. And so you were afraid to find yourself and others. And so you couldn't recognize a love without fear. There will be great joy in heaven on your homecoming. And the joy will be yours. For the healed children of God is the guiltless children of God. The healed children of man are the guiltless children of God. The guiltless children of man are the guiltless children of God. And to recognize that to recognize them, the guiltless children of God, is your salvation. the fear of redemption. You may wonder why it is so crucial that you look upon your hatred and realize its full extent. Yes, I do wonder why it is so crucial that I look upon my hatred and realize its full extent. You may also think it would be easy enough for the spirit to show you your hatred and its full extent and then just dispel it for you without the need for you to, array, to raise it to awareness yourself. But there is one more complication which you have interposed between yourself and the healing of your guilt which you do not realize. We have said that no one will countenance fear if he recognizes fear. Yet in your dis disordered state, you are not afraid of fear in your disordered state. You do not like fear, but it's not your desire to attack which really frightens you. You are not seriously disturbed by your hostility. You keep your hostility hidden because you are more afraid of what your hostility covers. We have said that no one will countenance fear if he recognizes it. Yet in your disordered state, you're not afraid of fear. You don't like the fear, you're not afraid of fear. But it's not your desire to attack which really makes you afraid. You're not seriously disturbed by your hostility. You keep your hostility hidden only because you are more afraid of what your hostility covers. And you could look upon even the darkest cornerstone without fear if you didn't believe that without the ego you would find within yourself something you fear even more. You would look upon even the darkest cornerstone of your ego without any fear if you weren't afraid, if you didn't believe that underneath your ego you feared to find something you feared even more. You are not afraid of your ego and its murderous intent. You are not afraid of your ego, even with all its murderous intent. Your real terror is of redemption, being released from the ego. That's your 
real terror is of being saved from the ego, released from the ego. And that's because under the ego's dark foundation is the memory of God. And it is of the memory of God that you are really afraid. Because the memory of God would instantly restore you to your proper place. And it is your proper place that you have sought to leave. Your fear of attack is nothing compared to your fear of love. And you would be willing to look even upon your savage wish to kill the child of God. You'd be even willing to look upon your savage wish to murder the children of God if you didn't believe that that wish to kill the children of God with guilt saves you from love. Because this wish to be saved from love is what caused the separation. You have protected your ego's murderous wish to kill the children of God through the projection of guilt onto them. You have protected that murderous intent, murderous wish, because you do not want the separation healed. And you realize that by removing the dark cloud that obscures it, your love for your creator would impel you to answer his call and leap into heaven. You realize that. You realize that. And that's why you don't want the separation healed. And that's why you don't want to look upon your ego's dark cornerstone of murderous intent. You believe that attack on the children of God is salvation to prevent you from from answering, being impelled to answer the call of love and leaping into heaven. You believe that attack is salvation to prevent you from leaping into heaven because you heard and felt the call and you were impelled to leap into heaven. Because still deeper than the ego's dark foundation and much stronger than the ego's dark and hidden and murderous foundation will ever be is your intense and burning love of God and God's for you. This is what you really are trying to hide by not looking the ego's dark cornerstones. In honesty, isn't it harder for you to say, I love, than I hate? Yes, it is harder for me to say, I love, than I hate. Because I still associate love with weakness and hatred with strength. It is harder for you to say, I love, than I hate, because you associate love with weakness and hatred with strength. And so your own real power, love, seems to you as your real weakness. Because you couldn't control your joyous response to the call of love if you heard it. You couldn't. And the whole world you think you control would vanish. Your own real power of love seems to you as your real weakness because when you felt that love and heard that love, you couldn't control your joyous response to the call of love if you heard it. And the whole world you think you control would vanish. That's why it's harder to say I love than I hate. 
Because if I felt that love, I wouldn't be able to control my joyous response to the call of love. And the whole world I think I control would vanish. And that's why A Course in Miracles and the, your divine indweller, that's why they, and the Course, that's why they seem to be attacking your fortress. The truth, the Holy Spirit, your divine indweller, A Course in Miracles, seems to be attacking your fortress. Because you're trying to shut God out. But God doesn't want to be excluded. You're trying to shut out God, but God doesn't want to be excluded. And that's why, that's why the truth seems to be attacking your fortress. You have built your whole insane belief system just because you believe you would be helpless in love's presence. And you are trying to save yourself from God's love because you think God's love would crush you into nothingness. You are afraid that God's love would sweep you away from yourself and make you little. And that's because you believe that magnitude lies in defiance, which means you believe that attack is grandeur. You think you've made a world which God would destroy. You think you've made a world that God would, would, wants to destroy, that God hates. You think you've made a world that God hates and so a world that God wants to destroy. And you, you now believe that by loving God, which you do, you would throw this world away, which you would. And that's why you've used the world to cover your love of God and God's for you. That's why you've used the world to cover your love. And that's why the deeper you go into the blackness of your ego's murderous dark foundation, the closer you come to the love that is hidden there. And the love that is hidden there, it's that that you are frightened of. It is this that frightens you, that love that is hidden there underneath the blackness and the murderous darkness of your ego's foundation. You have used the world to cover your love that you think you would be helpless in the presence of that would sweep you away from yourself making you little and so you have used the world to cover your love so that you wouldn't be swept away and made little. And you have used the world to cover your love and that's why the deeper you go into the blackness of your ego's foundation, the closer you come to the love that is hidden there. And it is the love that is hidden there that frightens you and not the darkness and the blackness and the murderous intent of your ego. You are not afraid of how murderous your ego is to yourself and others. You're really afraid of the love that's underneath the ego's foundation that you wouldn't be able to control your joyous response to and that for which you would throw away the world. That's what you're afraid of. I'm not afraid of my ego. I'm not afraid of its murderous intent. I'm really afraid of the love of God and God's love for me because I couldn't control my joyous response. 
And so now I think my real strength, love, is my weakness. You can accept insanity because you made it. But you cannot accept love because you did not make love. You would rather be slaves of the crucifixion than children of God in redemption. In other words, your individual death is more valued than your living oneness. And that's why what is given you is not so dear as what you made. That's why what's given you is not so dear as what you made. Because you would rather be slaves of crucifixion than children of God in redemption. Why is that? That's because you can accept insanity because you made it, but you cannot accept love because you didn't make it. So just because I didn't make love, I'm not going to choose love. Just because I don't control love, I'm not, I'm going to, I would rather be a slave of crucifixion I don't want love because I didn't make love. And even though I don't like crucifixion, I value it. It's more dear to me because I made it. You are more afraid of God than the ego. You are way more afraid of God than of the ego. And love cannot enter where it's not welcome. You're afraid of love, and love doesn't enter where it's not welcome. But, but hatred can enter where it's not welcome, because hatred enters of its will. And the ego, hatred, doesn't care for your will. But love doesn't go where it's not welcome. And so if you fear love, Love doesn't come, but hatred comes whether you welcome it or not, because hatred enters of its own will, which means it doesn't care about what you want. The reason you must look upon your delusions, your murderous thoughts, your murderous intents, the reason you must look upon your delusions, which means not keep them hidden, is that your murderous intentions do not rest on their own foundation. Now when you hide your ego's murderous intent, when you hide your ego's desire to attack with guilt the children of God, and when you conceal though, those beliefs, those delusions, then those delusions appear to rest on their own foundation, which means those illusions and that guilt seems to be self-sustained. When you hide your ego and its murderous intent, then your ego will seem to rest on its own foundation, which means be self-sustained real and that 
Your ego has a foundation that's real and self-sustained. That your ego rests on its own foundation. This is the fundamental illusion on which your ego rests. That your ego is self-sustaining. That my ego rests on its own foundation. That is the fundamental illusion on which on which all the delusions rest. Because beneath your ego, with all of its murderous intent, and concealed as long as your ego's murderous intent is hidden, is the loving mind that thought it made these hurting intentions in anger and the pain in this mind that believes that it, this loving mind that thought that it made this murder, this attack in anger on the children of God, the pain in this mind is so apparent when it is uncovered that its need of healing cannot be denied. And not all the tricks and games that you offer your mind can heal it. Because here in your mind is the real crucifixion of God's children. Beneath your ego's dark foundation, its murderous intent, and hidden as long as your ego is hidden, is a loving mind your loving mind that thought that it made hurt on others in anger. And all the pain in this mind is so apparent when the ego is uncovered that the mind's need of healing cannot be denied any longer. And not all the tricks and games you offer your mind when the ego is uncovered can heal your mind. For here is the real crucifixion of you. You offering your mind tricks and games to heal it. Instead of uncovering your ego to find the love hidden there. And yet, the children of God were not crucified. They were not crucified. You did not crucify them. They did not crucify you. You did not crucify yourself. The children of God are not crucified. Now, that none of us have been crucified is both our pain and our healing because the Holy Spirit's vision is merciful and the Holy Spirit's remedy is quick. The Holy Spirit's Remedy is merciful and quick, so as soon as you are willing to look upon your ego's dark foundation, to see your ego's hidden intentions, once you are willing to look at that, Spirit's remedy is merciful and quick. So, because Holy Spirit's remedy is merciful and quick, when you finally look upon your your ego's dark intense. Don't hide suffering from Holy Spirit's sight because Holy Spirit's remedy is merciful and quick. Don't hide suffering from Holy Spirit's sight. Instead, bring your suffering gladly to your higher mind, the Holy Spirit, your divine indweller. Don't hide suffering from your divine indweller's sight. Why? Because Holy Spirit's remedy for that is merciful and quick. So don't be afraid. Lay before Holy Spirit's eternal sanity all your hurt, all the hurt you think you've done upon others, all the hurt you think they've done upon you, all the hurt you believe you've done to yourself and all the hurt you desire to do on yourself, lay it all before Spirit's eternal sanity. Lay all your hurt and let Holy Spirit 
Let Holy Spirit heal you. Don't leave any spot of your hurt hidden from Holy Spirit's light. And that means search your minds carefully for any thoughts which you may fear to uncover and lay them before Holy Spirit's eternal sanity and let your higher self heal you. Don't leave any spot of hurt hidden from love's light and search your mind carefully for any thoughts which you may fear, any guilt, any hurt that you may fear to uncover. Because your higher mind, Holy Spirit, the divine spark in you will heal every little thought, every little thought that you have kept to hurt you and others. Your higher mind will heal every little thought which you have kept to hurt yourself and others and Holy Spirit will cleanse all those hurts of their littleness, restoring all your hurts to the magnitude of God. Beneath all your grandiosity, which you hold so dear, is your real call for help. Beneath all your grandiosity, which you hold so dear, is your real call for help. For you call for love to your Creator just like your Creator calls you to Himself. In that place which you have hidden, in that place within you where you have hidden all those hurts, the belief that you have hurt others, and the belief that they have hurt you, and the belief that you have hurt yourself, in those places which you have hidden your hurt, what you really want is only to unite with your Creator in loving remembrance of love. That's all you really want in those places where you're hiding, in those places where you're hiding the belief in hurt is is your love for your Father and your Father's love for you. All the, this place where you are hiding your hurts, what you all you really want is to unite with your Creator in loving remembrance of love. You want to find this place of truth and you will find this place of truth. What place of truth? that place of truth in them where all they really want is to unite with their Creator in love. You will find this place of truth in you as you see that place of truth in each other. Because even though your brothers may deceive themselves, like you, they long for the grandeur that is in them too. Even though your brothers may deceive themselves, like you, they long for the grandeur that's in them too. And perceiving the grandeur in them, you will welcome grandeur, and then grandeur will be yours. For grandeur is the right of God's children. And since grandeur is the right of you, God's child, you will be content only with your reality, which is grandeur. No illusions can satisfy you, a child of God. No illusions can satisfy you or save you from what you are. Only your love is real. 
And since only your love is real, you will be content only with your reality, which is love. Save them from their deceptions. Save them from their self-deception that you may accept the magnitude of your Creator in peace and joy. And that means exempt no one from your love or else you'll be hiding a dark place in your mind where truth is not welcome. Exempt no one from your love or you will be hiding a dark place in your mind where love is not welcome. And then you will exempt yourself from love, from love's healing power. For by not offering total love, you won't be healed completely. By not offering total love, you won't be healed totally. By not offering total love, meaning to everyone without exemption, you will not be healed totally. Healing must be as complete as fear, for love cannot enter where there is one spot of fear to mar its welcome. Love cannot enter where there's one spot of fear to mar love's welcome. Love cannot enter where there is one spot of fear to mar love's welcome. You who prefer specialness to sanity, you could not obtain sanity in your right minds. You who prefer specialness to sanity could not obtain specialness in your right minds. You who prefer specialness to sanity could not obtain specialness in your right minds. You were at peace until you asked for special favor. You couldn't stay in your right mind and prefer specialness. In other words, you were at peace until you asked for special favor. And God did not give special favor because the request for special favor was alien to God. And you could not ask special favor of a father who truly loves his children. And then, so you made of God an unloving father, demanding of God what only such a father could give special favor. God could not give special favor because their request was alien to him. And you can't ask special favor of a father who truly loves his children. And so you made of God an unloving father demanding of God what only such a father, demanding of God the special favor that only such a father could give. And then when you demanded special favor, making God into an unloving father, demanding specialness, what only an unloving father would give, now your peace was shattered. For demanding special favor of your father who could not give special favor, you no longer understood your father. Demanding special favor from your father who could not give special favor, now you no longer understood your father. You feared what you had made, but still more did you feel your fear your real father, having attacked your own glorious equality with your real father. You demanded of your father special favor, but special favor a loving father cannot give. And so you demanded of God something God could not give. And you made of your father an unloving father. 
I asked my creator father to be an unloving father and give special favor. And in this, our understanding of our father was shattered because we no longer understood our father. We feared what we had made, but still more did we feel, fear our real father having attacked our own glorious equality with our father. In peace, we needed nothing and asked for nothing. In peace, we didn't ask for special favor. In peace. In peace, we needed nothing and asked for nothing. In war, we demanded everything and found nothing. In peace, we needed nothing and asked for nothing. In war, we demanded everything and found nothing. Because how could the gentleness of love respond to our special favor demands except by departing in peace and returning back to the Father? How could the gentleness of love respond to our demand for special favor? If, <clears throat> if you did not wish to remain in peace, you could not remain at all. For a darkened mind cannot live in the light. A darkened mind cannot live in the light. A darkened mind must seek a place of darkness where that mind can believe it is where it is not. But don't worry, God did not allow this to happen. Yet you demanded that it happen and therefore believed that it happened. That, that what happened? That the guilt happened. The special favor happened. By demanding special favor, your mind became darkened because it did not wish to remain in peace. And because that mind was demanding everything and finding nothing, a darkened mind cannot live in the light. It must seek a place of darkness where that mind can believe it is where it's not, but God did not allow this to happen. God did not allow this to happen, yet you demanded that it happen, the special favor, and then the anger of God. You believed it happened, and therefore you believed that it was so. And all of that is because to single out is to make alone and thus make lonely. To single out is to make alone and thus make lonely. But God did not make you lonely. God did not make you alone. God did not single you out. Could God single you out knowing that your peace lies in God's oneness? God denied you only your request for pain when you requested special favor. God denied you only your request for pain when you were asking for special favor because suffering is not of God's creation. Having given you creation, God could not take creation from you. God could just answer your insane request with a sane answer. A sane answer that would abide with you even in your insanity. And this God did. No one who hears God's answer will but 
will but give up insanity. No one who hears God's answer but will give up insanity because God's answer is the reference point beyond illusions from which you can look back on the illusions and see them as insane. But seek this place and you will find it, for love is in you and it will lead you there.